Hello and welcome to today's CIDM webinar on collaboration scenarios for technical documentation. My name is Kathy Madison. I am with Comtech Services and CIDM. If you guys are not familiar with this, um, just so you know, Comtech Services is our consulting um, side of our company where we help clients in all sorts of um, service agreements, everything from helping them with content strategy, information modeling, um, to teaching workshops, and also doing user studies and benchmark studies for them. On the CIDM side, that's the professional organization for uh, the Center for Information Development Management. And we put on conferences and we run webinars like this one. We have newsletters and there's lots of networking opportunities for our members. And of course, if you're interested in our consulting services or in membership idea, both of those websites are there. But uh, the Comtech and CIDM are one and the same. And my role on the Comtech side is I do work on uh, consulting projects as they come up. And on the CIDM side, I am the member liaison. So if you have questions about membership, you can certainly um, come to me for those. And on the Comtech side, we do have a couple of online uh, workshops still scheduled for this spring. One is on taxonomy, and that meets twice a week for four weeks, and then did a reuse, which meets uh, once a week for a lecture, and then um, I believe there's also some office hours with that one as well. So those are the online. I don't put I didn't put them in here, but we do have uh, two classes coming up um, in Sweden that are on our website. So we encourage you to hit the Comtech website and go to the upcoming workshops at any time. On the conference home front, we of course are all getting excited for the DITA North America and our new Journeys conference scheduled at the end of April in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we are, whoops, sorry about that. I don't know why that went forward. Um, we're, we're excited to have that new conference. Uh, George, our speaker, uh, is planning to be at uh, both those conferences. He is speaking as well as um, Oxygen or Synchrosoft will have a booth. So if you want to meet George in person, we encourage you to attend that conference. And then I've also highlighted our Ideas Summer Conference because the call for speakers for that conference is open right now. Uh, the theme is all about a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, pictures include moving videos, etc. So we uh, uh, essentially are going to focus on um, going outside of the traditional text-oriented way of communicating information. So we encourage you to um, submit a speaker if you're, or speaker talk if you're doing anything in that area. And if um, you are interested in doing something in that area, we encourage you to attend that online conference. And we will have details about the best practices conference theme coming up soon. Um, and its call for speakers, I think, will come up about April 1st. So I'll give you that little heads up there. Lots of webinars on our schedule, including um, ones all the way into the fall. We have, um, of course, George today. We've got uh, Easy Ditta doing a talk on Ditta benefits, along with Don Stephen. That's associated with. Um, a little bit of the data satisfaction survey that Scott Abel and the Content Wrangler team did. So that is scheduled for March. And then George's um, counterpart, Radu, will be speaking um, on one of our webinars in April, on April 1st. So we're, we've got that going on. And then Adobe's going to do a review of their survey. And there are e even more, as I said. So go to our website if you want to see the other webinars coming up. And so before I turn it over to George, I do want to remind you that we are recording this webinar and we'll get the link to that recording out to you. And with all of our webinars that we do, they are always available on the info uh, management uh, development or info management website so you can download past webinars as well and if you do have questions for George we'll field that at the end of his talk and use the questions dialog box in the go to webinar um, control panel and with that I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to George he is the managing director of Syncosoft and of course most of you know um, that as the oxygen folks so with that uh, George it's all yours Thank you, Cathy, and uh, welcome everyone to uh, a CIDM uh, webinar. Um, 
maybe you can make me. Yes, I'm doing that right okay. now. <laughs> you <should be> set. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, as Kathy mentioned, our company is called Syncrosoft, uh, but uh, most of uh, uh, people in the data and technical communication field know better probably our main product, the Oxygen XML editor. Um, and um, I am actually also one of the founders of uh, the Syncrosoft company uh, back in 1998. Uh, when we started it, uh, as students, uh, we, me and a few of my colleagues got together and formed a company and in time uh, we built, we started actually after only three years in uh, 2001, we started to work on a product an editor for XML documents that we named Oxygen, Oxygen XML Editor, and that uh, become our main focus uh, in a couple of years. And since then, we are developing tools to help uh, people create, use structured content, uh, and in particular, data, and collaborate on this. So, uh, an overview, a quick overview of uh, the tools that we provide. We started, as I mentioned, with the XML editor that you see here. That was mainly a development tool for XML. And then we added the visual editing functionality. That is the XML authoring part. And it's part of the main part of the XML author product. The editor containing both the development and the authoring functionality. We moved then a bit on uh, more on collaboration with the web uh, editor and with the collaboration platform content fusion. And then on the publishing, uh, we actually just uh, released a new major version of uh, our tool set uh, in the middle of February. So a couple of a weeks ago that include the uh, feedback which is a platform that allow people to uh, add comments and replies uh, embedded in html pages and in particular uh, useful for the data generated web help uh, so we have also the web help and the pdf chemistry which is an engine that generates pdf using css and the publishing engine is uh, it's basically the web help and chemistry engine and uh, the data support that we have packaged uh, as a tool to be used for scripting. So in a continuous integration scenario and things like that. Today, I want to focus and give you some uh, ideas uh, that you can use not only with uh, our tools, but you can just uh, take these ideas and implement them with uh, any tools basically that will provide similar support. But these uh, collaboration scenarios come from uh, our actual use. In the last uh, two, three years, we are using this uh, inside our company, so uh, within Syncrosoft itself. And let me move to the First scenario. Uh, as I am attending different events and uh, people talk a lot about uh, enabling a continuous improvement of the technical content, of the technical documentation, because that's useful. You cannot, I mean, everything you make, there's always room for improvement. So we create content, we publish that, and then that is used by our users and by ourselves. 
by our, by our team, for instance. And we need these feedback loops from <clears throat> how the content is used to the content maintenance team to enable this support to improve the content when it hits uh, the reality, the, the real world. And uh, I think this feedback on our published content may come either from external users and the usual things that are offered are ratings, you know, like one to five stars or uh, plus one, minus one, one up, down, uh, like, and so on votes and comments or questions that people can uh, directly add to a page that displays that comment what we provide also with this uh, uh, feedback oxygen feedback uh, service that i mentioned that we just released a couple of weeks ago but then uh, we also have feedback from internal users which may be, for instance, uh, your support team, which are users of uh, your technical content. If we look at the support workflow, that looks more or less uh, something like this. So uh, when a user hits a problem uh, or if he needs some help, he will send a message on a, a support channel. So he, he will send a support request. And that will reach your uh, support team, which will analyze that request. And uh, one place to look for answers is actually uh, your documentation. So your documentation may contain responses to many of the users requests so they will probably search and eventually find the topics or the content related to that particular user issue they will read those topics to make sure that they respond to that issue and reply to the user and probably close uh, that support incident but what really happens here, right? So we have a support engineer that will search through the documentation, trying to find an answer to a real problem. And they read topics from your documentation, not that you know they have a task to just read documentation and make sure it's nice, it's good but they read those topics trying to respond to a real problem from a real user. So what do we have here? What can we recognize? We can recognize that these steps basically are represent a documentation review that is already done by a subject matter expert, your support engineer, right? So we already have a review process going on and it's a very important review process because uh, there is someone very motivated to find the answer to a real question in your documentation. And I think this is one point that, uh, one scenario that can be uh, improved. So uh, we should take advantage of this existing documentation review process to improve the documentation. But for that, we need to uh, make it easy for the support engineer to actually provide that uh, feedback to the documentation. Because when they read 
the topics they may determine that something is missing because the user asked for a specific parameter and they look where that parameter should have been in the documentation and it's missing, for instance, or the documentation is incomplete or it is wrong. So how can we enable them to provide uh, a solution or a resolution or an improvement to the documentation so that it will respond maybe to the next user that will have a similar issue? So our solution was to <clears throat> make the user guide available on a GitHub repository. Actually, it is available on a public GitHub repository. And I think that's something that can be done for any published documentation because when you publish the documentation in HTML format, for instance, you already have that available to everyone. So the fact that you have also the data source available, it's, it doesn't expose anything new from your company, let's say. And then we add uh, edit buttons on our uh, published documentation. That means that a technical support engineer, as they read a topic, they have immediate access to the underlying source uh, of the topic they are looking at. Another advantage with this, uh, it relates to the fact that we are using GitHub uh, a Git-based uh, repository is the fact that the updates or the, the, the changes that they are uh, suggesting do not necessarily are, they are not directly applied to the documentations, but they come in the, in the form of uh, pull requests, that means uh, suggestions that will be approved, integrated by the documentation team. So maybe the suggestion is in a part that is reused for three other products and the update suggested makes sense for only for one product but not for the others. Right, so uh, that's why it's uh, it's better to have this uh, additional step when the updates are not directly applied into the documentation, but they uh, the documentation team get a chance to review and correctly apply them based on how they structured their documentation for use, for instance. This is not necessarily a data uh, specific, but uh, it's specific for any reuse mechanism. Uh, when you send updates on some parts and those parts may be used in other contexts. And in order to enable this, we also provide a simplified workflow for contributors. Because without this simplified workflow, uh, the access to content on a GitHub repository will not be that easy. Uh, for the example, this is the uh, a usual uh, contribution workflow. When you have a, a, a repository on GitHub, then you need to fork that as your remote repository, then clone that and you have a local repository, you have a checkout and you have a working copy, then you edit a file with the desktop tools and, the, and then you commit to your local repository, push to the remote and send the pull request, which is really 
too complex for many users, not for everyone, uh, but for many users that may be too complex. So uh, what we we did to enable this collaboration scenario is to completely hide all these steps and replace them with change and save. So basically the simplified workflow is that uh, the user will just edit the file is already picked automatically by the specific edit link that they click on. So they just change and when they save the content that will automatically imply for commit push and create a pull request. And let me show you exactly how that looks like. It was already open here. <laughs> so this is our user guide that you find uh, now on our website. So if you go, let's say to Oxygen XML uh, under resources, documentation, you have here the web help documentation or for the different products that we uh, we have. So the web help for the Oxygen XML editor will be this one. And uh, in the search field, uh, I already searched for instance, let's say we receive uh, a top a question about validating uh, the integrity of uh, data content that uh, if I have a link to a topic and that the, the target topic is not present, I can get, let's say, uh, a validation warning that uh, that link is broken or something like that. And uh, so the support engineer, engineer may look for data map validation and completeness check. And when they search for that, they get a number of hits. And when they click on, uh, on this, they will get to the data map validation and completeness check. And they can see and read through this and see you know, if uh, this uh, answer the user question, like check the existence of uh, uh, even of non-data resources, for instance, even in uh, remote resources, right? So you can detect broken links, not only to data topics, but also to non-data like uh, maybe an images or maybe you can link to an HTML external page and then you need to enable also include remote resources to get that kind of feedback uh, from this uh, validation tool. But now if as the support engineer will read through this, if they find anything that can be improved they can just click on this edit online button, which will basically open uh, the web editor uh, exactly with the content of that topic. And then they can suggest uh, uh, a change. And I added here this context. So for the rather than uh, the root map selection, I added the context root map selection to fix uh, and clarify this. Uh, and if we do that again, let's say here we are context, and we, we may put this into um, a user interface control. And then when I save, uh, I will be able to commit this on a, on a new branch, uh, maybe provide the name, fix uh, uh, reference to root map, and um, we have also a policy to provide this contribution uh, to have a sign of message. Uh, 
And now if I commit, so we will see again uh, this live. So a pull request is created automatically. And if we click on this, uh, we can see the proposed change. And if we click here, we can see uh, that I added this context UI control to the document. And now uh, our documentation team will be able to review and accept this pull request maybe or ask for more. Uh, so I did the same uh, just in case so we can have it uh, available. So that's, uh, and this, you can see these are basically live on, uh, uh, on GitHub, right? So you can see the, the pull requests and uh, actually we can also, because I have uh, admin rights on this project, I can also accept the pull request, but Otherwise, if I will be like a normal user, I will not have this. So if you access this URL, you will not have uh, the merge pull request button. But in my case, I can also say, okay, I, I can merge uh, this pull request and then this will automatically be applied on the hotfixes 22.0 branch. That's because um our branching structure is the 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 master and then we have different hotfix hotfixes branches for different versions so we can uh, we still have the documentation available for other versions of oxygen and they are also they may be the documentation may be updated if we decide, for instance, that we need to republish version 20, adding support maybe for a newer version of Java that for some reason does not work with version 20 anymore. Let's in, imagine that scenario. So a new version of Java comes and uh, we need to support that as well. Uh, version 20 is still uh, is not in end of life, so it's still a supported version, let's say. Then we need to go back and maybe apply some fixes uh, on the product, but then we need all to update also the documentation to reflect those changes and republish. So that's why we maintain these hotfixes branches uh, to be able to go back to different versions of uh, the user guide and republish, repackage the documentation with the product if needed and uh, make a new release even for older versions and there may be different reasons for that like uh, different security updates uh, that are needed and so on yeah so that's uh, <laughs> mainly the 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 idea with the first collaboration scenario enabling uh, the support engineers to provide immediate feedback on the documentation directly on the source, have the technical writers have the last word on how that feedback reflects to the uh, to the product, to the documentation of the product. And in that case, we take advantage of the fact that uh, the web editor is not, and that's very important because many people may think that a browser-based editor is like a desktop editor, but it runs in the browser. That is true, but the main distinction, I think, the the importance of a web editor comes from the fact that you can reach 
the 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 browser based editor using a URL and in our case the URL if you look uh, uh, maybe maybe we can look here into um, we can click edit online again and we can look here the URL looks like this so it's uh, is the base URL for the web editor and then it has different parameters URL equals and that will point to github.com uh, the oxygen XML project the user guide folder uh, sorry the user guide oxygen XML uh, account on github the user guide project the hotfixes uh, 22 branch and then the data topics uh, folders and then within the topics folder the data map validate dot data file and then it provides also the data map equals and it points to the data map and also the data val filter uh, url and it points to a filter uh, data val file so uh, the idea is that you can create such a url to enable someone to just follow a link and be able to reach the browser-based editor with access to that specific data source. And then you can embed and play with these uh, edit links and uh, push them in any document or in any place where you can have a URL even into a PDF document, for instance. So the same can be done to have these edit links within PDF documents. And we provide Data Open Toolkit plugins to generate these edit links automatically for PDF and HTML-based transformations. Uh, and coming back to this idea that uh, you can take this idea and implemented it implement this with any uh, other tools that will work in a similar way let's say they are not necessarily hard coded or uh, you don't necessarily need uh, and oxygen is the only way of doing this it's just that one way of doing uh, this um, and uh, of course we are using uh, oxygen and we are using this for already for a number of years now another uh, scenario relates to how the development and the documentation interact because uh, in our case, and I think in many cases, the documentation is not created without a direct connection to the product. The documentation actually follows the product update. So once you have the first version of a product, and you work to create the next version you already have the documentation for the first version the released product and then you need to update the documentation to follow the updates to the product and the question is how do we make sure that we document everything and uh, not only that but uh, once the documentation is created we want that to be reviewed by the subject matter experts that know better the technical part let's say uh, and they need to check that yeah so that's uh, how the, the documentation update works 
uh, in our case, and I think also in the general case, mirroring the product updates. And in our case, we track the product development using an issue tracking tool. So we do not just uh, randomly change the oxygen uh, source code adding functionality. We record an issue for everything that we want to do, either if that is a new feature or a fix or an improvement. And once we have these uh, issues recorded, we will prioritize them based on, I don't know, benefits, uh, how easy or how difficult it is to fix something or to implement something and so on. And each issue uh, passes through different states, like it's uh, open, uh, people work on that, eventually it will be fixed, it will be verified that the fix actually resolved the issue and then it's closed. So in order to integrate this documentation part, uh, we extended uh, the workflow to add this documented state. So once the issue was fixed and the QA team verified that actually it works, it does what the fix is supposed to do. So like a double checking, we have a lot of automated tests. They are also part of the development process, but we have also this uh, QA step when uh, someone will actually verify also manually once uh, the issue that it's it's actually fixed. So we added this documented state. So after the issue is verified, it goes to the technical writers to update the documentation. And in this way, we try to make sure that the updates to the product are reflected into the documentation. And then the, the next stage was that we want the documentation to be reviewed by the subject matter experts, in our case, by the development, uh, developers. So let me <clears throat> go back here. This is uh, from our internal issue tracking system, we use JIRA, and we extended the default workflow to include, uh, as I mentioned, this uh, documented state um, and reviewed state. So, uh, once the issue once the issue is uh, verified uh, it will go to the documentation team and they will change it to the documented and then the documentation needs to be passed to this doc reviewed uh, step to be closed right so that's um, well this does not show uh, but from the review, it goes to the documentation. You can see also that we have the QA stage, we have also the code review process. So there are more stages here. So how can we how can we enable what we want? First, um, so the question is, how the subject matter expert, the developer in this case, uh, how, how is he able to find the relevant information to review the documentation? 
that's the the one of the most important thing because if you want your developers or subject matter experts in general to review the documentation imagine that if we have um, before the release we ask for our developers now let's review the documentation so they work maybe three months or nine months sometimes uh, to create the functionality for a new version of the product and then you need to review all that at once or even if we give them here's the user guide even after each issue if they receive the user guide and say now review the updates to the documentation you know and you have like 2000 pages in the user guide that's not doable and uh, you cannot waste uh, the developer's time with something like that so what we uh, implemented is that we automated this process adding a message directly into Jira the issue tracking system used by the developers with something like you can see here so whenever there is an update to the documentation related to a specific issue within that issue we add a message like this files to be reviewed and then we point to the files that were modified with links to show the diff to show what was changed how this file looks like when it's published in our case as web help and direct access to the source of uh, of that topic and I have here not this one sorry yeah so I have such an issue on our Jira and this is uh, the entry added by this script which is basically uh, like two pages of uh, uh, batch script that will push this message into Jira and uh, it gives access as I mentioned to uh, how the document looks like when it's published so this is the data open toolkit project HTML file that's generated from the data open toolkit project data file so when this topic is published it will look like this then uh, if you click on the source you get access to the source of that topic in this case because we are still under development you can see that we have a different project user guide minus private which is a private github project in this case so it's not generally visible because we and probably you also if you do not develop an open source project but a commercial project you do not want all the changes uh, to your documentation to be immediately visible to everyone once you release as i mentioned uh, it's okay to have the source of the documentation available but before you release you may want to keep that private so in our case we have uh, two remote repositories on github one is private and we develop we commit on that and we uh, update that as we um, develop towards a new version of the product and once we release we just merge the private into uh, the public uh, repository and the source becomes available uh, on the public repository 
Okay. Uh, this is uh, an extension, it's a plugin that we added for the web editor that allows to send uh, two URLs, URL and diff URL, uh, to the web author. And uh, in that case, the web author will present uh, the file side by side and will apply an XML aware. Uh, three-way diff. You can actually uh, provide three uh, three parameters to provide the uh, file that you compare, the one that you compare against, and the common ancestor. And then uh, this will show you uh, the, the changes between those two versions considering that they come from that common ancestor. Yeah, so in this case, there was only this note that was added. Uh, and the last link that we have in the issue here, it's the default GitHub. So basically, uh, initially we had only this as the div, but because we already had in Oxygen the visual div support, uh, we extended, we uh, created a plugin for the web author to be able to create such a, a visual diff, which is a bit nicer, I think, for sometimes to, uh, for someone to see uh, the changes in this way, visually. So, in this way, the developers get to access exactly the uh, changed parts of the documentation so they can see the div either in text or uh, in uh, or visual they can see how the topic looks like so following the published link they can see how the topic looks like when it's published so they can see how that uh, note is rendered, for instance. And if they want to make any change or suggestion or anything like that, they follow the edit, the source link, and that will get them into the web author, uh, and they can, you know, provide uh, a suggestion or a change or an update or uh, directly on uh, on the data source. But how uh, is this all possible? Uh, this takes a similar idea with what we have, what developers use for uh, code changes. It's a convention that any commit message starts with the issue ID. And this allows to aggregate all the code changes uh, into the issue. So we apply the same convention for documentation, which means that any documentation commit message, so any change to the documentation when the technical writers will commit that change, they will include in the commit message the issue ID. And that allows that script to automatically identify each commit to what uh, Jira issues it relates. So then uh, it makes possible to create this, uh, these messages here. And you can see also now the uh, uh, the documentation review step when someone just added, you know, like this is optional actually to add something also a message or when you transition uh, through the documentation review stage, you can just transition that or you can add also uh, a message. So 
So to summarize a bit, uh, in this case, we wanted our developers to review uh, the, the documentation. We wanted our technical writers to follow the updates on the product and update the documentation. And uh, we also do not want to miss uh, any functionality. And at this stage, actually, we do not update only the technical documentation, but we also uh, update the release notes. As you can see, um, uh, this documentation stage, uh, we push also, also into the what's new list, into, into, which is basically uh, our release notes that are used when we uh, announce uh, the product. Some uh, issues will not trigger an update to the what's new list. Others will, uh, uh, will trigger such an update. And sometimes some features will trigger an update on the website. On, we have also some additional marketing information on the website. And at this step, when we have this, uh, when the issue should be documented, that can push an update also on that uh, website content, which is marketing content. And we enable that by integrating directly into the developer workflow tool, into uh, the issue tracking tool they are using, automating that process, exposing them only to the modified, to the uh, minimum part that they need to see. So rather than show, saying, okay, this was documented, now figure out you know, where in the documentation there were changes, right? So we, we give them uh, pointers to exactly where the changes are, what are those changes, and also ways to uh, enable them to modify or correct, improve those changes if needed. Yep. <laughs> so I hope uh, these two uh, first two scenarios gave you some ideas and also you were able to see all, uh, another thing that these edit links uh, in this case are uh, sent to JIRA, for instance, to an issue tracking system. You may have maybe some other issue tracking system that will work in a similar way. So moving on to another scenario that I want to uh, share with you is that uh, we are thinking you know that uh, once we created a web author that enabled uh, this uh, type of collaboration scenarios where you identify an existing workflow and you can improve that by using these edit links and uh, um, which is really nice and uh, powerful. But there is still some need to work a bit on the setup, on the initial setup. Uh, you need the content to be accessible to the web author. Um, maybe it's not available in on some repository that you can access with the web author directly. The web author has an API that allows you to create uh, uh, a small plugin to give, enable the web author to access any repository, but that's still some development work. So the question came then, what, how, what about the users that 
let's say are using the desktop version of oxygen but they they do not have any resources or knowledge or infrastructure to set up uh, uh, scenarios like you collaboration workflows as uh, the first uh, that I presented earlier. Can we try to think about a way to enable anyone uh, to take advantage of the web author and be able to collaborate with other users that are not necessarily very aware of XML or structured content or um, that do not have um, or they do not want to have a license for the desk or desktop tool for working with XML, which may be too much for them. Maybe they are uh, users that need to access that twice a year. So, it, from a business point of view, there's no way to justify uh, having a license for such a user. And also, uh, for the desktop version, probably they need to invest also a bit more time on to familiarize with the tool or um, in order to be productive and to uh, work with the uh, with xml so but if we can give them access to the web author in a uh, in an easy way that will be uh, will be a, a, an interesting idea so that's from that we started and uh, uh, we want to we wanted to see you know uh, that if you need to collaborate but the people you collaborate with do not have access to uh, your tools or to similar tools um, they may not be part of your workflow they not may be they may not be uh, may not have access to your CMS or repository. Um, but you may want to review or approve their changes before those changes reach the repository, even if they have access to the repository. Um, maybe you want also a less formal way to receive for feedback let's say if you are like a junior writer that just joined uh, a team uh, you may not want to necessarily commit the changes to the repository uh, before uh, and then have someone you know or an automated test that will show uh, that you just introduced some errors and things like that. So you may want someone to review a quick way to uh, to to share the content with somebody else and have uh, maybe a senior writer review that content before uh, you push that to to the repository. And the main idea was to collaborate without any setup cost or effort. And we started from uh, looking at uh, an existing uh, workflow where let's say you have uh, some XML content and your workflow, maybe I don't know, local files or some repository where you check out, commit or um, a CMS where you obtain the content and uh, but at some point you uh, you modify that content. Uh, so let's suppose you modify that in uh, in a desktop tool like Oxygen. One way to collaborate with others, right? It's to maybe call someone, uh, explain the issue that you have. You know, I'm creating this new topic and I want to express this functionality or uh, I described this like this, is this correct from a technical point of view and so on. Get their feedback over the phone and you modify uh, 
that content and then you continue your internal workflow, right? Which is accessible to you. So basically this step when you modify the content uh, enables to span a collaboration workflow with somebody else. In this example, using a telephone or a chat application or email or something. So how can we provide a better solution at this stage? Uh, we created this Oxygen Content Fusion collaboration platform with the ready-to-use support for DITA, Dogbook, XHTML, and actually any XML document. And the main focus was to make it uh, as easy as possible, as simple as possible. So the, uh, the content owner, we call this the author, uh, will select some of the content and create uh, a review or a collaboration task based on that content. Then uh, this content will actually be made available uh, via a URL to people uh, the author wants to collaborate with. So the author after uh, he creates the review or collaborations task, will receive a URL, a link that uh, will send to the people that he wants to collaborate with. Those will be able to follow the link in any modern browsers. Basically, they will use the web author to interact with the content. So they will be able to make changes to that content add comments, you know, and so on. And optionally, they can mark, uh, they have an option to say, I'm done with this. So uh, then the author will see that the reviewer finalized uh, his tasks, his changes, his review process. Then back, the author will be able to just press a button and bring in those changes made by all the people that uh, he shared that uh, link with back into the original files he created the collaboration task in the first place. So that's uh, basically uh, the process and the tools that uh, we provide for that are the editor or author products the desktop tools. They come already with the Content Fusion uh, connector plugin pre-installed. That will con uh, connect to the uh, Content Fusion server. And we have uh, uh, our demo server is generally available and it's uh, 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 you can use it without uh, any cost. And uh, the reviewers will use any modern browser to interact with the with the content. So then uh, that workflow where the user modifies the, the the content changes like this. So the user will uh, uh, create a task and share the content. Collaborators will uh, change the share content using the browser through the web author, and then the author will integrate their changes back into the original source and then continue his normal workflow. So rather than calling someone and applying the changes manually or it's by itself, the author can just select the content he wants to share. A copy of that content will be placed on Content Fusion and uh, the collaborators will change that copy. And then when the, the author uh, integrates their changes, we use that 
three-way uh, XML aware merge support that we have to bring in those changes, uh, presenting the visual diff and so on. Uh, so the, the author sees uh, the impact of those changes and applies them to the content and further they can modify it uh, before committing to the repository, for instance. So they have full control of what goes into uh, the repository. And let me show you also a quick view of that. Yeah, so this is uh, where Content Fusion is presented on our website. Uh, it looks also something like this. You can see here an existing document, uh, a task that was assigned to me. I created also some demo tasks. Um, this is a, a real document. It's our end of life policy statement, which is published on our website. But when this was uh, uh, created, we used Content Fusion to collaborate on uh, on this document creation, for instance. Uh, let me go also to the desktop version of Oxygen. I think it's here. So uh, basically when uh, uh, you start, for instance, you have a data map, you have some content uh, in the desktop version and this is the, the content fusion. And initially it will be something like this. And then, uh, so by default it will connect to fusion at oxygenxml.com. When you say connect, it will ask you to log in, sign up for a fusion account initially, and then to authorize uh, content fusion the plugin and the plugin will display the existing task plus this placeholder to create a new task. So if I want to make, to give access to these three files, for instance, I I can select these um, uh, three topics in the data maps manager, drag and drop them here, provide a name for the uh, review task and see, hit upload. And now, uh, as you can see here, I have uh, this URL that I can share with uh, the people that I want to give access to this content. And when they will follow the URL, they will be able to see uh, the content in the browser, even on a, a tablet or a, on a smartphone. And then they can review this uh, you know, adding more content, maybe adding a comment, uh, deleting something and so on. Uh, by default, uh, track changes is enabled, uh, is forced for, for a task, uh, but you can decide maybe that you don't want track changes to be forced necessarily. And back in Oxygen, you can see that I see that one file changed. And then I can press the Get Changes. Maybe we should make also changes maybe to another file, but just the idea is that you can uh, go through this and see uh, the changes, even the, so this block was changed, but within that you can see the uh, secondary change that actually uh, gives you a lower or a, a more granularity of the changes at the world level. So then you can actually uh, better understand uh, what was going on. And here it was just a comment on this and uh, the addition. But even, uh, and it says that the file can be automatically merged. So you can apply this. And this will appear, all the changes will appear here. And because I use uh, track change information, I can use the review panel uh, to go through those changes and maybe reject this one. Uh, 
um, the comment I don't know I can keep this uh, I maybe I accept this change and uh, this was an existing comment I may remove that and I don't know I may um, decide to act on this comment you know uh, let's say I, I add some content uh, based on that and I, then I can remove the comment and now I save this and I am ready to continue my workflow if this was on a repository let's say with uh, check in check out or something like that then I can check in my changes and so on or commit my changes and so on We added also, uh, in the last version, we added also support to uh, allow also subject matter experts, let's say, to log into Fusion and create a new task. So then uh, they can provide uh, uh, maybe initial content, for instance. So they can write about uh, uh, a new feature or uh, something like that. And once they are done, uh, they will be able to uh, go and, uh, sorry, not this one. Oh, I didn't add the title. something like this let's say and then they can assign this further to a technical writer that will integrate this uh, draft content let's say into the actual documentation so that's uh, a new uh, addition and then uh, another example that I have here done previously is that um, a technical writer also can use uh, some processing instructions to provide uh, on-the-fly instructions with this uh, information what the user needs to add so here uh, if I type the actual information the uh, this uh, text disappears uh, automatically so but uh, it still remains for the current editing session if I delete the content and the element becomes empty but otherwise uh, when I I'm done with the with this uh, there will be no uh, no processing instructions or no garbage let's say hints garbage left into the file so that's another possibility uh, for the contribution part not for the review so you can create like a template and share that template with somebody and they can just fill in uh, the information into that and you can integrate that uh, and you control these uh, processing instructions actually we can see them also here they are something uh, like this placeholder content and then uh, something is written here which is the actual uh, content that you see uh, rendered with uh, with gray here in the in the in the author yeah so so that's uh, more or less uh, uh, the last uh, part where we tried basically to enable any oxygen user to be able to immediately share content uh, with anyone and uh, do not require them to install any tool they will just follow a url and they will be able to interact with the structure content directly uh, into a browser from any modern device uh, desktops, laptops, tablets or smartphones and then be able to integrate that back into the original uh, source.
So I think I'm uh, I, I I finalized uh, my presentation and we still have a few minutes for uh, taking responding to some of your questions. Sounds good. Thank you so much, George. Um, very interesting scenarios, a little overlap, but also very unique. I, I like that. Um, remember, if you have questions for George, type them into the uh, control panel. There are a few that two that came in when you were talking about the um, content fusion, the, and I can't can't remember if you showed this or not, but is there a way to do an at mentions for you know the reviewer so it can tag a specific um, SME? You know, you would do like at George or at Kathy mm -hmm. to make sure that they would get that. Yeah, so um, the I think we do not implement that yet, uh, but um, uh, Fusion has also this part with the uh, messages and uh, uh, then uh, uh, when whenever there is a message uh, sent uh, in this uh, on the task level uh, there will be email notifications sent to users based on their settings so uh, on my profile uh, I can uh, you see when new messages are added on uh, on task assigned to me I will receive an email notification. So there's no mention, but whenever someone will uh, send a message on the task, will add a message, I can receive uh, uh, a notification by email about that. Uh, mentions are on our to-do list. So that means you'll have them done tonight by midnight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you guys now, just kidding. Okay, what about um, also in the Fusion, can the author add XML tags? I thought that, I think. Yes, so uh, yeah. here you have access to the author, to the Oxygen author, and uh, uh, you can, let's say if you want here to add something, when you, uh, you can use the toolbar to access a number of uh, actions, but you can also press enter, for instance, and then uh, we uh, provide this uh, layer where the XML elements are uh, made user friendly. But we also understand, you know, if you type pH, we understand the pH element if you are more data aware, let's say, and we show you phrase as. Uh, or I don't know, maybe some other uh, short desk, for instance, we select short description, right? Although short desk does not really match short description, which is uh, the user-friendly name. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, you have all the toolbar actions, uh, and you can also control, uh, because this is the web author, um, you can take advantage depending on the CSS files or on the frameworks that are, you are using. Uh, you can have a different authoring ex experience. Uh, basically, you can use uh, anything. Uh, if you go on the web author, we have a dashboard with samples. And then uh, you can see here uh, a number of uh, uh, customizations with form controls or for instance for lightweight data <clears throat> uh, there is uh, you have this kind of uh, plus when and then you can select uh, from uh, different actions that you can provide in line hints the the same web author is used also in fusion so you can have a similar editing experience for a user. So in this case, if I want to access the attributes for this image, I can just say edit uh, and uh, done, and then I can get access to, uh, with uh, these forms to some attribute information and so on. So, um, yeah. Okay, so in back to Fusion again, um, when someone sends a content out um, 
for review, but then mm -hmm. needs to update the files locally, how do you mm -hmm. ensure everything stays in sync before the <coughs> review is closed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, basically uh, that's that was uh, also one of the idea with the uh, fusion that, uh, for instance, let me go back to these. So I may have uh, updated, you know, the so so now this is the unmodified content. So this get changes uh, will bring me the changes made on Fusion, right? The ones that we integrated earlier. But I may go and change this locally, right? Because I don't know, maybe my content really needs to change. So when I hit get changes. Uh, sorry, not on this one. On this one, uh, you can see that this is this can be automatically merged, and then uh, I still have my local changes here. So that's the the difference with the three-way uh, merge. If it was only a two-way diff, you would have seen that this uh, was changed remotely to this. And the, the the merge basically would have uh, overwrite your local change, but because we have a three-way merge, we are able to uh, differentiate between your local changes and remote changes. And this is considered like a pseudo conflict, and it can be merged automatically. Um, so what happens is that on Fusion we store the original version of the content and the modified version of the content. The original version is considered the common ancestor, the base uh, when we apply uh, the three-way diff. It's the invisible part which uh, is the ancestor of both these versions, let's say. And that is used to uh, determine that this is changed uh, from the base and this is the same as the base so actually this is a local change is not that the remote changed this paragraph in this case so now when i apply the changes my local changes uh, is uh, are still here okay so a couple more questions here um so can you generate a report on the number of open questions that need to be addressed? And again, that Fusion-related question. A report on number of open questions. questions and... Anything like that to know the status <laughs> of outstanding um, requests? Yeah, so, so basically um, Fusion also has uh, automatic locking on topics. So uh, basically if I go uh, what we recommend is that when there are comments uh, or uh, uh, changes, uh, sometimes uh, uh, or issues that people are not sure exactly what uh, uh, they should handle them, uh, they they should go on Fusion, you know, and uh, reply to a comment. So if it's uh, uh, please provide details or something like that. Uh, so then, uh, because we have this support for uh, replying to comments, so you can have a comment, a reply, maybe another reply, and then so you ha can have like a thready discussion, and then you can also mark as done some parts of the conversation, and at the end when um, everything is, um, you know, you clarify this and maybe you updated the content, you can just say remove this comment, you know, and you're done with that, and the update is here. Also, as a, uh, as the owner of the task, I can also go and accept some of the changes. Um, you know, at some point, uh, go through these changes and accept some of them, and then the other people can also uh, propose additional changes, and then I can also accept them, so I can have this uh, uh, tracking, let's say. Right, so in the examples you've done so far, it's been a single contributor working with a writer. 
Um, what about when there's multiple people reviewing at the same time, sim you know, simultaneously? Mm -hmm. Is the is the update is the documented updated live for each contributor? Um, is it refreshed periodically? And how are the comments like those comments that you just had? Would every reviewer see all those comments? Yeah. So um, let me uh, share maybe. Uh, on the chat, so I added uh, this task with uh, the entire demo map, right? So then uh, I can share this with everyone. So you can feel free to access this URL on the chat window, and then you will be able to uh, get access to this uh, review task. And uh, what happens is that uh, we do uh, automatic locking on each topic so uh, as a user you will be able to see uh, that i am uh, accessing this topic and if someone some of you will access uh, any of these topics i will see that you have the current uh, you lock on that i i can still view the content uh, but that content will be uh, will be shown will be presented that is uh, locked by uh, by somebody else, right? And then uh, uh, you, uh, when you access as a reviewer, because I force track changes on, you do not have the option to, this button will not appear uh, in your uh, UI. Uh, so all the changes that you do will have track changes because that's how I decided to to share the task, but there are no possible conflicts on Fusion because we have this automatic locking. And if you leave a file, uh, you know, without touching it for half a minute or so, uh, the lock will be released and somebody else can take the lock. Or... So that's, that's also... Great. That's great. So can you um, save the comments or for a future reference? Are they, are they saved automatically or how does that work? Yeah, so... Um, Actually, uh, when you so so right now, uh, when you integrate uh, in the in the desktop version, you can maybe have uh, an initial commit uh, or commit on a branch with all the comments, all the feedback from that task, maybe, and then that will be uh, your repository. But we uh, have been working on. Uh, enabling uh, uh, full uh, history for content fusion and uh, our next release will uh, allow you uh, to see all the change history when you download uh, a task so when uh, when you are on a task here you can see you can say download so this uh, package will actually uh, bring you uh, not only the the last content, the the, uh, the, the fusion uh, edited content, but also the entire history of the changes. So then you can record that, uh, you know, and have that as a. Uh, some people require to keep uh, archives of uh, this kind of. Uh, suggestions or changes that were done uh, on the content for some time. So then you can just uh, store that uh, uh, archive and uh, that contains also the history with all the changes. Great. All right, just a couple of quick more questions. Um, one, do you have instructions written up on how to connect to JIRA and GitHub that you could possibly, is there a, a link for that or maybe the person should email you directly and ask for yes. that yes so we can provide the script that we are using uh, i think we should uh, uh, yeah we, we should probably so if uh, somebody will contact uh, me i think my contact details are here uh, we, we should be able to share uh, the script that we have and i will make a note to uh, maybe provide uh, this as an example uh, in our documentation or 
Okay, good. And then the other question is, how does uh, the Content Fusion integrate with CCMSs? And I'm going to put your email yeah, so, in the chat. Yeah, so, so um, uh, as long as the content is available in the desktop version of Oxygen, then you can create a review task and then you can integrate uh, the result uh, back into uh, into Oxygen. And uh, uh, even if that content comes from a CMS. The next uh, part is that we uh, want to allow also other clients for Fusion. So um, to be able to create uh, review tasks through our API, and then uh, anyone can will be able to make an adapter for content Fusion. Uh, but the required step for that was the integration part, because when you see when you uh, say uh, get changes, um, you have these three versions, the call locally modified, the remote, and the common base. And then you need to have a way to provide this merge. And uh, we made the first step by making the diff available uh, into the uh, web. And that's uh, uh, our, our plan is to uh, make also the merge available, and then uh, so so one step is done with the, this diff into the web, but then we need also the merge part, and then uh, it will be easier to create uh, such clients to uh, apply this. Merge. Of course, uh, sometimes uh, you may not need uh, this diff if you control the local version. If the local version does not have any changes, then the merge is just override the local change with the remote one, right? So the local version with the remote one. Uh, yeah, so, but we, we plan to enable uh, the use of content fusion through API, so different clients uh, will exist uh, for uh, to to connect Fusion to any repository. Right now, as if the content is available in the desktop version, whether that's for from WebDAV, a CMS, or local files, uh, it will work with uh, with Content Fusion. Great. Okay. I think the other questions will take a little longer to answer. So I, I did put your email in the chat. So folks, you can follow up with, with George directly on that. And I did want to end with a couple comments. If you came in late, I did let you know that George is going to be at the um, the Dita North America and the Journeys Conference. So you can certainly uh, chat with him then. And I do want to thank you, George. And we have a comment that I want to read to you. It says that uh, the fusion is exactly in line with the way they'd like to work. And the presentation was great and very encouraging. And by the way, Oxygen, Oxygen is my absolute favorite application. Keep up the great work. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, uh, thank you, Kathy, for yeah. having us to present this uh, CIDM uh, webinar. And uh, uh, yeah. hope you will we join Radu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Radu so. on April 1st. And yeah. Yeah. So thank you, George. Thank you, everybody, for participating. I know we went a little bit over, but um, George had a lot of good things to say, as always. So we appreciate you sticking around for um, the extra time. And George, hopefully we'll see you in uh, at the end of April, if everything yes. continues sure. to go Looking well. Looking forward to that. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.